So let's have a look then here. Describing your neighborhood. Uh, this is something that I wanted to take a quick look at because um, it's something that we use pretty much every day anyway. All right. So let's take a look here. We've got the use of using there is and there are. All right. So generally we use there is uh, to talk about singular things, like only one, right? Um, so, for example, right, there is a supermarket near my apartment building, right? Using there is, meaning only one. Um, so that is the difference of using is. When we use is, it only means singular, only one. Compared to, we use there are for plural things, uh, which means, of course, more than one, right? Two, three, four, etc. So, for example, there are four primary schools not too far away from my house, right? Uh, for those of you who uh, are familiar with uh, primary schools, um, those of you who aren't, then they are elementary schools, yes. Um, in England, we say primary schools. All right. And now, using this one, a couple and a few. This is where things get a little bit interesting. And this also, I would say, um, makes it a little bit challenging as well. So using a couple uh, and a few, this makes things really, really good for when we want to sound a little bit more natural. Um, it's okay to use there is and there are, but if you're looking to become a little bit more fluent, a little bit more natural, then uh, using the, the little things like this, a couple and a few, will help you do that. As we say here, we can also use a couple, which means two, um, and a few, which means generally more than two, um, but not so many. Uh, when we can say there are, right? There are a couple, there are a few. So we can use that style of sentence. So, for example, as I said, we usually we say there are a couple and there are a few. So here, there are a couple of nice parks in my area. And the second example, there are a few places that you shouldn't go to. <laughs> So we can use, yes, there are a couple, there are a few, right? So we can use that one um, as a good example for us to push the boundaries, push our language skills to the next level. All right. So the next part here is, and this is where it's going to be a little bit frustrating, confusing, maybe those words. So we can sometimes change the contraction of there are. So for example, there are a couple of apples on the table. However, in this form, we can actually contract it and it would use theirs, right? There's a couple of apples on the table, right? So when we're contracting it, making it shorter, we would say there's, not there are, yeah? So this one is, for example, because we cannot contract to there, yeah. <laughs> All right, so the contraction for there are 
we can say there's there's a couple of apples on the table there's a few um what would i say there's a few candles uh on the shelf right we can use things like that now we can have a look at using have any and some right um the reason i've included have for example uh, sometimes we use we have because when we are talking about our neighborhood we feel like it's part of us or we are part of a community um, and part of that area that place so we feel kind of connected to um, that place right so in this case here um, we would use we have for example do you have any indian restaurants near you yeah we have a couple but i only go to one because the owners are friendly right so yes we can use we have and notice here we can use we have a couple right um, so we can often use it in replacement to there is um, or there are all right um, so yes we generally would use we have for feeling part of a community all right however using any and some can be very tricky so as a general rule we use some in positive affirmative sentences and we use any in interrogative um, for example questions as you can see do you have any that's a very good example it's asking a question and also negative sentences as well so let's take a look we have some beautiful houses in my area so again here we have some right we could use there are some um, as well uh, it's okay to use that one but that is a positive sentence so we use some the next one is a question so do you have any high schools near you right using any because it is of course a question the next one we don't have any football teams in our village so this is a negative um, sentence so we have to use any don't have any yes or you can say um, there isn't any there aren't any as well when it's for a negative sentence but as it does say however any can be used in affirmative statements to say that it is not important which specific individual item is referred to so this means that um, when it doesn't matter, right? Anything is okay, right? Or for example, press any button, right? Anyone is okay. So it doesn't matter which one. Um, so we can use it in that positive. But for today, we're going to stick with the main general rules. All right. Oh, an example of using these here. And if you would like to practice making your own example, please do. Go ahead and I will check few uh, I will check through some of them, hopefully um most of them, and we can of course uh, correct some of the mistakes that maybe you make but let's take a look at my example 
We have a few nice places where I live. There is one beautiful park that is about five minutes from my house. And there are some football pitches as well. We don't have any office buildings nearby, but there are loads of houses and schools. Okay. So yes, there you go. Right. So using, as you can see, there is, there are, okay. We don't have any. Yes. Um, there are loads, right? In this case, we can use there are and then loads as a good example, right? There are lots. There are many. Um, you can use those as well if you feel like. There are loads. Um, it's kind of a, a fun one for us to use, actually. Uh, quite common. There are loads. There's just a few that we can look at. Vibrant is one, right? Um, somewhere with lots going on, right? There's lots of things going on. The next one is vast and sprawling. Yes, this is a good one. Vast and sprawling means to be very big yes uh, the words at the end are synonyms they are similar words right so vibrant very similar to lively vast means quite big huge uh the next one inexpensive right inexpensive meaning not costing very much to live Yes. So if a place is inexpensive, then yeah, it doesn't cost much to live. So it, we could use the word cheap as well. All right. The next one. Compact, right? Compact is another good one as well. So this means that it's not very big. And it's contained in a small area, right? Uh, another similar word is small. The next one here is contemporary, okay? Contemporary. So this means it is modern and up to date, right? Um, so again, another synonym, you could say modern. Right. The town is very modern or it's very contemporary. Either one is OK to use. All right. The next one. Bustling. Right. When something is bustling, it is crowded and it's busy. Yes. Um, so, yeah, we can say as another word is busy. It's somewhere is busy. And let's take a look. The next one here is quaint. Now this, I love this word. I think it's great. Quaint means it's attractively unusual or old fashioned, right? Um, so it could be a little bit of both. So a synonym for this could be attractive. Or it could be kind of like old as well. So yes, quaint is a nice word to use um, for us in this situation. So here are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then if you count vast and sprawling as two, then there's eight adjectives that we can use. Right? So this is quite a long example, but I just wanted to show you about like the adjectives that we can use. So here is the example. My area is very quaint. It has sprawling countryside views from basically anywhere. There are a few farmers festivals 
that we have during the year which makes the village very lively and bustling with visitors from the neighbouring towns and villages. There aren't any big shopping centres near my house, so if I need to buy something, I have to drive about 30 minutes east. Okay, so that there is just to show you an example of what we can use or you know when we can use them to describe our you know neighborhoods right so idioms for today i believe we've got six six idioms a stone's throw away right yes right a stone's throw away um you could actually say a stone's throw is okay um some people add in a stone's throw away that's fine um but yes you can use just a stone's throw if you want to the next one clean as a whistle yes clean as a whistle is a good one to use and this means pretty easy actually something that is very clean uh, it could be a car it could be a place right yeah you could say oh my car is as clean as a whistle yes um no problem at all all right the next one is a good one as well been through the war yes i don't want to confuse anyone uh with any any mistakes there we go i have corrected it as if nobody knew all right um yes the next one is been through the war which means something that has been damaged yes um so we can use that one there it's really really quite damaged or doesn't have to be damaged but for example if it's bad weather and things if it's got cracks in the walls um yeah we could say it's been through the war is okay this one's a great one dead as a dodo yeah i like this one dead as a dodo meaning it's quite quiet not many people yes um when something is dead it's very quiet it's yeah quite silent could be a little bit creepy actually um but yes we say dead as a dodo all right the next one is another good one hive of activity yes a hive of activity um, this is a place where there is a lot happening right um, for example you could say just before dinner the kitchen was a hive of activity um, meaning you know everyone was trying to get prepared for dinner so yes it was a hive of activity lots of things going on all right and the last one for today is second to none yes this is a good one second to none meaning the best nothing is better than this right yeah so we can use that one second to none right 